Uh, hey everyone, I'm uh, happy to say that MidiPaw version 1.1 1 .1, uh, is officially out. I've finally got it completed, um, and I wanted to take an opportunity to just quickly take you through um, through the major changes. So uh, for those who aren't familiar with it, I'll just spend a moment uh, letting you know what it is. I'll open it here. Uh, so MidiPaw is uh, a Windows application that basically interfaces between one of these, a, uh, a Leap Motion motion controller, which is just a a small small device that tracks hand motion uh, and it takes it and it converts it into MIDI messages that you can use to control the expression in a virtual instrument uh, like this one. This one is the Air Adventure um, Infinite Brass. Uh, I've got the trumpet sample loaded in there uh, right now. It's a very nice instrument uh, and the two go together quite well. Um, so in, in terms of in terms of the the operation of it, it works on the on the concept of performance rules. And I'm going to I'm going to load a preset here just for the quick explanation. Uh, I have a preset made for Air Adventure instruments. Now basically, what uh, what this does is you load individual rules uh, that take a motion, in this case left and right, uh, and they translate it into a MIDI message. In this case, modulation wheel. Um, you know, similarly, there's a twist here onto uh, CC number number 21. Uh, and if I if I put my hand in here, you can see that uh, for the left and right motion, as I move my hand left and right, uh, the message that I'm sending is is left and right, uh, and it's connected to dynamics in this VST. And you can see that that's moving that way. Uh, similarly, down to the next rule, I've got twist set up to 21. 21 uh, is the vibrato depth. So uh, if you watch right here, and I twist my hand left and right, you can see that the vibrato depth is changing. Uh, vibrato rate is this parameter here and it's with the in out motion of my hand and I, I have it configured just to move on a very small range but uh, you can see it moving with my back and forth uh, and finally there's the growl parameter which I have on an open and grab uh, motion so if you watch the growl parameter here and I make a fist and I let go of a fist it it puts on the growl uh, portion of the articulation uh, again I've got it configured just a little bit um, but uh, but you can see it moving there. And the idea is that you can control these four parameters at the same same time by moving your hand around. So uh, I'll quickly show what that is with, uh, with a few notes and see, see how we do. Uh, so it, it, you know, it adds a little bit of realism to it. You can hear some vibrato coming and going and growl coming and going, and you can do, do something a little bit uh, slower. Um, So it gives you a little bit of, uh, of control over the realism. So that's that's what it does. Uh, and just by way of introduction to the one one changes, the there's a little bit of a GUI change that I wanted to wanted to point out first um, in the front end. So inside each of these these rules, you can drop down and get the detailed configuration. And what I've done in this version is I've moved things into different pages. So this is the sort of response section where you can you can control how much motion is there and how uh, MIDI paw responds to it and what kind of messages it sends and in what way. Uh, and there's some new functionality here that I'll go through later um, about resting and resuming. Um, it adds um, a little more predictability, I guess, to some of the controls uh, and kind of a kind of a cool concept I missed. There we go. Uh, of only when or conditional rules. It's a way that you can put on restrictions for when this particular rule will will be in operation. So um, it, it's basically designed to keep sort of a clean interface. You can use only these top level uh, to get the very basic levels of control, but the additional um, levels of detail control are available in, in these sub pages underneath. And uh, you know, in the future, additional functionality can fit, can fit nicely, nicely in here. Um, and the other overall um, change that you'll see is that there is a MIDI input port configuration now, uh, and that is to support uh, the MIDI automation that is part of the platform now. Uh, and I'll take you through that as well um, a little bit later. And I guess the final uh, the final thing is that this configuration of the interfaces, the leap motion itself, uh, and the MIDI in and the MIDI out, uh, it is no longer stored with presets. It used to be, um, and that didn't make a lot of sense. So I've separated that out so that these are basically configured in the application, and they just stay configured the way they are in the application. They don't move um, on a preset to preset basis. Uh, so that's it. That's the basic uh, basic run through of how one one uh, is is uh, is different from a front end perspective. Uh, and I'll take you through uh, some of the detailed sections and talk about the differences there. All right, cool. Thank. You. Okay, so I'll take you through the resting and resuming functionality that's been added. Um, to do that, I've, I've muted um, these rules, so they're not going to come into play at all, and I'll just, just work with the dynamics, uh, and I'll expand that. Um, so you, you can see as I, as I move my hand 
Um, if I don't have any of these settings set uh, to use any rest positions and I take my hand away, it stays right where it was. And if I put my hand up, it jumps basically right back to where my hand was um, so that it's kind of jumping jumping around to, to wherever is, is appropriate. Um, which is okay, but it's not very musical in terms of its continuity. So one thing that you can do is you can set a rest position. Say, yes, I would like to use a rest position, and I want to rest in sort of this quiet spot. Um, so if I go here and I take my hand away, it'll move slowly back to there, sorry, because I've set this duration, which is, this whole thing is about a second, so this is a little bit more than half a second. Uh, and if I take my hand away, it sort of slides back to that position. It's a, it's a good way to sort of cool down as you as you play. If your hand comes away, it quiets to that spot, kind of slowly. Um, so, and that's you know that's great for for one part of it, and that's how that's how you can rest. But there's a couple of ways you can resume too. Uh, right now, the way I have it, it will jump right back to where you put your hand in. But you can also put a delay on the on the resume, so uh, uh, half a second or so there. Uh, and if I if I play with that, see when I put my hand back in motion. It climbs up there, so it's a little, little smoother. I rest, and I come back. So a little bit smoother, which is, which is kind of nice. And there's one other uh, kind of cool feature which I uh, like. I call it the sticky pickup. It's like a non-motorized fader. Uh, if, you, if you've ever used one to do the mixing with, um, you have to go through the position where the thing is held in order to pick it up and start moving it. Um, and it's, it's a little bit easier to show, um, <laughs> to show graphically. So if I have uh, if I have pickup to resume on, uh, and in fact I'm going to take the smoothing down because it shows it shows it a lot uh, more clearly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, and I'll just show it without sound. If I if I rest here, you can see I rest, and the pink bar for the motion goes back. And if I put my hand back, it doesn't attract the pink bar anymore. So there's my hand moving with the white circle, and I won't be able to get control of the actual motion and the messages that are being sent until I go over and I pick up the pink. And now I can. Now I'm back to controlling it. If I take my hand away, it slides back. Put my hand here, and I'm not doing anything until I go through the position where it was, and that's when I get control of it. Uh, so that's the sticky pickup uh, function. And so the two of those, um, the two of these settings, kind of the the various resting settings and the resuming with the sticky pickup, uh, gives you a lot of control over how how it's going to react when your hands are away. Um, and it also it does the same thing when the rule is muted. So I'll just use global mute up here, but if I'm if I'm here, well, you know, I'll, I'll use this mute. If I'm here and I turn off the rule so it's no longer responding, um, the rule will still go into mute position. Um, sorry, into the resting position <laughs> before it mutes. So it, it goes down there, and when I unmute it, it's in pickup mode, and it, in this case, it doesn't pick up until I grab it because it's sticky pickup. Um, but if I went here and I took it out of the pickup uh, mode, there we go, uh, and into the response. So I'll go over here and I'll mute the rule. So there it is over there, um, and I'm just going to leave my hand here. If I unmute, it's going to slowly slide up to there. That wasn't slow at all because I turned the uh, I turned the speed down to zero. So let me show that again. I'll turn that speed up. <laughs> Go back here. I'll mute the rule. Down it goes. I'm going to unmute, and it's going to slide back to where my hand is. And you see, it's even taking its time uh, in sort of a damped motion. And now they're in lockstep uh, because it was doing that over that entire resume period. Uh, so it's definitely worth playing with. Uh, that is the rest and the resume functionality. All right, cool. Thanks. Uh, I'd like to show you the conditional rules functionality now, or the uh, the only when. Um, so so to do that, uh, I'm going to use this this same settings that I was using last time. Um, but I think I'll I'll move the growl up here, and I'll use I'll use the growl. Uh, somebody pointed out um, that it wasn't particularly realistic to have a growl in the lower dynamic. Um, ranges of, of the sound, and yet the way um, the way that these the way that these rules are set up, um, I can make a fist, uh, and I can get a growl even at the at the very quietest. Um, so the way that you can control something like that, or or uh, basically any other conditional conditional step, I'll show you in a second, is with these only when rules. What it lets you do is put in um, a motion restriction before this rule is actually used. So it effectively mutes the rule until all the conditions are true. So I'm going to add a condition here, and uh, I'll show you what I mean. So I can say that so left and right, and it's now showing me that motion of left and right, and I can I can pick any of the motions in the application this way. 
Um, so left and right, what I would like to do is I only want to use the growl rule, for example, when the motion is yeah, kind of in this top range here. That's when I want to use it. And if you notice, the border of this rule is turning red when I'm outside of the range. And then when I move into the range, this is this condition is met and therefore this rule is active. When I'm outside the range, it gives you a red um, outline just, just as a visual indicator, especially when it's minimized to know that this rule is not in play right now. When I come up, it's in play. It's no longer red. Go down, it's red. It's no longer, uh, no longer in play. Uh, and because I'm jumping in and out of play, um, I really want to use some um, some resume smoothing um, as well as some, um, when I go out of play, I want to go back to no growl, which is zero, uh, and, but I want to go there kind of in a, in a smoother smoother fashion. Uh, in this case, I don't, I don't care about sticky pickup. Um, so if I look at the kind of the main main response curve, um, you can see that while it's red, I can I can make a fist. Uh, and even though it's reading the fist motion, it's not sending any fist message. Nothing's happening on the send message. Uh, but when I move up higher in the dynamic range by moving my hand right, now the rule's in play. There it's not in play, here it's in play. Now when I make a fist, uh, I'm sending the message. And you can see, the, see it going through. So here, you can hear it going. And when I'm down here, it doesn't go. And if I make a fist here and I move into the range, It uses the smoothing to kind of damp in and out. So that's a bit irritating. In and out of the of the growl sound. So uh, if you think about that, you can be pretty creative about what you want to put into these only when rules. Uh, you could use it to subdivide the region by motion. Um, you could use it. You can have multiple criteria. So you can um, you can have multiple things that must be true before a particular rule can be used. Um, so you can use the same motion, for example, when um, the finger spread is open. If I had that there, da, 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 where's the spread? There it is. Um, this is a lot like echo, I think. Um, when the finger spread is open, my rule is active now, so I could have this rule configuring something, and I could have another rule which is configured to be active when the finger spread is closed. So I could could double up the motions just by a spread. I could double up the motions by a fist. Um, you could have motions that are in one particular height range versus some other height range. Um, so you can configure them that way to really um, kind of multiply the range of uh, range of expression that you can control with this thing if you are very detailed and, uh, and tweak minded. It's certainly uh, certainly possible with these. So this is kind of an exciting feature. I'm happy about this one uh, and it turned out very well. Uh, so cool. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching that. So another thing that's been added into version 1.1 is uh, some MIDI automation of MIDIPAW itself. Uh, so we have the addition of a MIDI in interface. Um, this, is, this is my main one connected to my keyboard, uh, and I can configure MIDI automation in, in a couple of ways. So the kind of the main, uh, the initial main way is the, um, is the uh, automation of the preset selection. So if I click on the little MIDI keyword there, uh, you can see that I've got a couple of things connected, and they can they can um, be activated by either a program change uh, or a key switch. Either way, and it's got it's got a learn function here. So, um, for example, the Air Adventure patch. Um, if I go into learn mode, and on my keyboard, which you can't see, I'll press uh, program change 003. There it is. It's taken program change 003. I'll press it again, and I'll hit program change 000. Uh, and there it is with program change 000. Uh, and there's a setting down here which allows automated preset changes without warning that you have unsaved changes. You would use this if you're using multiple patches in a, in a performance um, uh, or, or sort of rapid changes where you know you're going to be tweaking parameters, but you don't want to be warned about the saving. So uh, live dangerously, why not? I've got it set, <laughs> so we'll put it there. Uh, and PC001 is just a, a motion-based one that I've got there. So. If I say done, um, now I have not saved this particular preset. You can see the save is lit um, with the work I was doing last time. I'll just go ahead and I'll press my program change button here and it's going to go ahead and it's gonna change to the in motion. Didn't warn me, just like the setting said. So those changes that I just made in the last thing are lost. Uh, boo hoo. <laughs> so if I press program change zero zero, uh, it's gonna change back to the to the Air Adventure patch. Uh, so that's a nice way to do that. The other, um, uh, and this, this sort of glows pink when you've got something set there. If you don't have MIDI automation set, uh, it's I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just delete this guy, sure, and I'll delete that guy, sure, uh, and you can see it's gone out now. There's it's not lit, indicating that there's no MIDI automation going on 
uh, behind there. Um, there's also MIDI automation available inside the rules for uh, for super tweakers. Um, one that might be applicable to everybody is uh, is the mute. And the way you access the, the MIDI automation for these guys is uh, kind of like you might traditionally do in a lot of different virtual instruments. You just right click it uh, and you get a little MIDI automation window. Uh, you can hit the learn button and let's say I want this on my very bottom uh, A key. Uh, I'll hit that and I get uh, A1. So the way the key switches work for automation, like a mute here, uh, is if I hit it softly, it, it turns off. And if I hit it hard, it goes on. So I can globally mute the whole thing with a, a light key press to turn it on, hard key press to mute. Uh, light key press to, what am I going? Uh, oh yeah, a light key press to turn it off and a hard one to turn it on. Uh, and I can I can right click and I can just uh, delete the MIDI automation on on that one. Uh, same thing is applicable in in the particular rules um, and in in most of the detailed settings. So uh, I'm not sure why you would want to do this, but let's say we've got this reverse response. So sometimes you want the response forward, sometimes you want the response backwards. Uh, you can right click that and learn. And let's say my bottom B, I want to make uh, make a reversal. So if I hit the B hard, it reverses, hit the B light, it doesn't. And you can see um, the motion and what's being sent change immediately when I do that. Uh, and the same thing, I can do an individual mute here. Uh, I don't know, B flat uh, or A sharp, excuse me, um, in octave minus one. And what you can see here is it tells you that there is MIDI automation with this thing because there's no other indication on the exact control. So you click that uh, and it's telling you what's what's in play for that for that particular rule. So you can um, you can you can see what's going on in, in the particular details. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can configure um, these these slider um, slider values. You know, let's let's say you want rest return to change uh, according to a CC somewhere throughout the song. You want faster return in some points and slower return in other points. Um, sorry, I'm assuming I'm using rest position, so I'll I'll right click on that guy uh, and on my keyboard, which you can't see, um, I'll use a CC message. Um, let me just learn that one. So CC93 is a slider on my keyboard, and now uh, I'm sliding the slider on my keyboard, and that uh, that guy is moving as well. I can also, um, and this this is more for programming than performing, but I can also use a key switch on on these kind of things, and it uses the velocity to de to determine the location. So uh, so I'll use that that C down there. I'll learn uh, key switch C0, and now as I play softly, it's down at this end. If I bang it, it's up at that end. So you can use the velocity to set whatever you want to send through. It's not really practical for uh, performing, um, but it is it, it is reasonable if you're going to program that in. You can put in uh, put in the velocities that you want. So uh, in this case, I'd be much uh, much more likely to to learn a CC, and I could program that uh, program that CC so that I can control the rest return. You know, in the faster portions, rest return might be there, and in the slower portions, you know, maybe maybe I want it there. Um, so I could program that in with my uh, you know, program that in with my song as I'm performing it as well. Uh, so that is the MIDI automation. It's available for all the rules. Uh, it is available uh, through everything in this response section except for this um, this response curve. Uh, it's available for everything in rest and resume. It's available for mute and solo, uh, and it is not available in any of these uh, any of these particular rules. So you can't uh, you can't dynamically change the range by which a rule applies, by which a rule becomes active, <laughs> because that's just getting too complicated. So. So I stopped there. Uh, great. So that's the conditional rule functionality. Um, thanks very much. So in addition to those other uh, functional changes, there's uh, there's a few other um, pieces in here that are probably worth worth speaking about. Just a, a grab bag of a couple of other um, couple of other things. Uh, one of the things that was an issue with the first version was the handling of high resolution um, MIDI messages. So uh, certain certain devices and certain uh, virtual instruments can handle uh, basically high resolution or 14-bit MIDI messages. And the way it does it is that it combines two CC channels together that are 32 apart. The, the MIDI spec uh, says that. So if you are sending you know, a high resolution mod wheel, uh, it'll send part of the message on CC1 for the mod wheel and the other part on CC33 for the mod wheel. Uh, and I had sort of that 14-bit um, switch just sort of uh, working automatically if you chose one of the high resolution uh, controllers, but that was unintuitive and it's not really how other uh, other software does it. So I've, I've rearranged how I do it uh, to, to be hopefully more, more intuitive. Uh, 
let me know if you disagree. Um, but basically what I've done is is here when, when you're selecting a, uh, a MIDI message, if you're anywhere between 1 and 32, you have the option to turn on 14-bit support. Uh, so here I can go ahead and I can click 14-bit. And what it's actually doing is, as it says there, it's, it's pairing with CC, in this case 33, uh, to send 14-bit high-resolution numbers. Uh, and it's kind of interesting. You can see on Infinite Brass, this control is is tuned to 33, so it's not anticipating high resolution support. But you can actually use it to illustrate the high resolution support. Um, if I get my hand over, I'm, I'm moving the dynamics in, in a typical fashion. Um, but you can see the attack accuracy is spinning like crazy because that's the high resolution portion of the message. So you can demonstrate that that it's kind of working. I could turn off the 14 bit, and then I've just got the normal uh, the normal 7 bit. Uh, or low resolution uh, control of, of dynamics. Uh, so that's uh, that's how that works. Uh, this 14-bit toggle is only available when you're picking between 1 and 32. If you pick something else, uh, it's not available. So hopefully that uh, that's a little bit clearer. Um, one of the other changes is uh, a small one. It's the addition of uh, a new motion. There it is. Uh, it is a uh, kind of a, a yaw motion, turn left and right to spin your turntable, open the jar of pickles, whatever that is kind of kind of motion. Uh, I didn't include it in the first version because I find it kind of uncomfortable honestly to do, but uh, maybe you're more flexible than me and you can you can work that into a musical performance somehow. So that's uh, that's there to use now uh, as well. Uh, and probably the last uh, the last piece we're talking about is in the leap motion configuration. For the working space, uh, we've added the uh, the option to have it asymmetrical uh, by taking off the symmetrical tag there. Uh, just people have different um, different organizations of their of their workspaces, and and maybe symmetrical around the axis of the leap motion isn't going to work for everybody. So uh, I added the circles so you could sort of see where your hand was relative to this and this asymmetric option. So if I put my hand out here, sort of in the in the top far away section, uh, and I take away symmetrical and I say I would like to learn by clicking that, then I can basically just sort of paint in the active region that I want to use uh, for the position-based uh, position based motions. Uh, and there we are. So it will it will use those just those bright painted spots for uh, for controlling controlling the motion. So if I turn that back to uh, let's uh, let's say a left right um, and I look at the detail here, you can see that the left right is actually operating just only this over this little small uh, area that I painted versus kind of the wider area that um, that I more typically use. Um, obviously, that's an extreme example. Uh, so for, for me, I'm a fan of the defaults. They cover cover my working space okay. So if I say I'm done there and I go back, then you can see that the motion is now working over a much a much wider range. So you can tune that to your space, and then on a per rule basis, you can you can tune in further with the with the motion ranges there. Uh, so that's it for the changes. Uh, hopefully you can you can download and give it a try, and I hope you like it. If you have any feedback of any kind, um, issues, ideas for features, I'm happy to consider anything. Just uh, hit me up through the website at uh, midipa.com. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much for watching.